Welcome to the Texas State Capitol. With us today is a very special guest, State Representative Oscar Longoria from District 35 from South Texas. Thank you very much for uh, coming out here and joining me today. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. I understand you're really busy with the budget. You sit on the Appropriations Committee. You have a lot of work that's been uh, going on. You know, the, the budget process, it's a long process. You know, in the fall, um, agencies will come before the uh, Legislative Budget Board and start explaining what their asks are, what they need to sustain the state agencies. As session rolls around, the uh, the House names are House Appropriations Committee, Senate names are Senate Finance Committee. Now what ends up happening is they work through a budget, um, each respective chamber has their budget, and we vote on that, we get it out of committee, it goes on the House floor, it's voted out of the House floor, and then it ultimately goes to conference. You know, we're on the second week of April. Uh, last week we voted the uh, budget out after a 15-hour debate on the House side. Senate voted theirs out a couple weeks prior to that. Now what we'll do is they'll select five members from the House, five from the Senate, which are considered conferees, and then they'll go and reconcile any differences and see what they can sort out to ultimately get a budget that both chambers can vote out. What are issues that are important to you right now that they stay in the budget and don't get decreased too much? You know, um, I like to say our budget's a little bit better than the Senate budget, especially on higher ed. Um, we needed to make some cuts. We always make it a priority to make sure that we address the needs versus the wants first and foremost, and we understand we're in a tight budget cycle. But I think our budget um, focus on higher ed and we try to make scrapes versus cuts. The Senate, uh, they dug in a little bit deeper and, and you saw 10 to 12 percent cuts for higher ed, which is very important because that can have a very negative effect for South Texas because we have the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley and aside that we have the medical school component. Um, so my interest has always been to make sure that we keep South Texas on the map first and foremost and make sure that if we need to make some cuts that they're going to be limited and we cut where we can kind of um, not absorb so much of a risk versus areas where they'll impact us for the next couple years. Why is the medical school important for South Texas? The medical school is very important. One, it provides an academic institution so that individuals can go ahead and pursue a career in medicine, which is, is, is something very nice. But more importantly, the research has shown that individuals that go and attend a medical school will probably stay within a certain radius of that medical school. And, and that's very important for, uh, for folks in South Texas, especially because of health care. Uh, we're going to be able to get professionals in the medical field that will be able to help out you know, every respective county, Cameron, Hidalgo, Willis, star and uh, I, I think that's where we'll see the benefit aside the economic growth is more importantly the health benefit that we're going to have for the entire Rio Grande Valley. Why is regionalization when you look at health care you look at transportation education you're looking as a region you you, you, you know uh, we can't pit it as a battle McAllen versus South Padre Allen or Brownsville when you start looking at the area as a region you have strength in numbers you know we have two senators in that area actually three if we you consider Stark County Senator Zaffarini Senator Nojosa and Senator Lucio and then you have the numerous representatives that represent South Texas when we all work together and we get behind one cause it makes it a lot easier to work the members or work the senators and ultimately put South Texas on the map. Um, what ends up happening is when you have city versus city, you know, it's, it's a smaller issue, but when you kind of work together as a conglomerate, it's, it's something very important. And that's why you see areas like Bear County, Travis County, Harris County, Dallas County experience phenomenal growth is because they kind of work in numbers. So we may not all agree on every single issue, but ultimately the main issues, which are education, infrastructure, transportation, public safety, I think everybody kind of has the same mentality so it makes it very easy. So that's why it's important for us to kind of band together on these big causes and make sure that everybody from the Rio Grande Valley delegation works together for those issues. You said uh, border security. How do you communicate to people in Dallas and Houston about our community? You know, I tell everyone, you know, our community is very safe. I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. Um, I was fortunate enough to come up to school here at UT. I went to law school as well. And when I graduated, I pretty much could have gone to go work in any part of the state. But I always had a priority to go down to South Texas. I feel the area is very safe. Now, I understand there's always a criminal element being so close to the border. But I tell everyone, you can probably find that element in any big city. You know, you even here in Austin, if you go to certain areas of the city, I'm sure they're very unsafe. So I told folks, you know what, there is an issue, of course, with human trafficking drug smuggling but that's an isolated incident those are various issues that just kind of affect the border area and if you're not involved in organized crime you're probably never going to see that 
Now, there has been a big influx of funding because of border security. Uh, good or bad, I think South Texas receives a direct benefit. You know, and the direct benefit is, you know, those DPS troopers that go down there, the National Guard, you know, many times they're able to kind of piggyback with our local law enforcement and maybe alleviate some of their stress where they can go ahead and focus on the actual community votes. Uh, instead of focusing on the border and, and that's a direct benefit to us you know I think uh, you know you go look somewhere in North Texas West Texas they don't have a direct benefit so I tell folks you know for whatever ish, whatever side of the aisle you're on, on on border security whether you're for it or against it South Texas has experienced a direct benefit because of it you know we have the transnational gang center now down in McAllen and those are direct benefits for our community um, ultimately I think it's it's the federal government's issue uh, that they need to address on border security because it is a federal issue and I think we'll probably see that and when we do see that I think we'll, we'll probably scale back on the Department of Public Safety down in South Texas but for at this point uh, from the House side we're just trying to keep the status quo on what was funded in 17 and uh, the Senate I think may want to enhance it but we just kind of want to make sure that everything stays the same and I anticipate that in 2019 whoever's up here will probably look at that and hopefully be able to scale back because by that time the federal government's probably put more resources down in South Texas. From a Rio Grande Valley perspective, what are some of the issues that we're going to be seeing the next few weeks and months? I think for the Rio Grande Valley, starting first and foremost is higher ed. Um, we have UTRGV. It's, it's a great institution that serves various needs for all of South Texas. Uh, there's an important component of it, which is a medical school. So we need to make sure that the funding levels are, are adequate enough to make sure they address the needs. Now we understand we're in a tight budget session and there's going to have to be various cuts, but I like to use the phrase that I'd rather make scrapes and cuts, especially for institutions of higher ed because they service so much of the community. I think that's something that the community really needs to be focused on uh, because we need to make sure we address the needs that we have and make sure we don't distance ourselves so that we back in 19 and there's kind of a lag and we're trying to catch up. We need to make sure that we sustain the levels that we have right now and if we have to make the cuts, make sure that their scrapes not cuts. You, you sit on the Appropriations Committee which is coveted as one of those key positions because you make decisions that could affect Texas for the next two years, right? Yes, um, I was very blessed. Um, I first came up here in 2013. I was selected to be on appropriations as a freshman Democrat. And then um, last session I served on appropriations as well. And this session I've had the privilege of being the vice chairman and I'm the um, the chair of Article 1, 4, and 5. Article 1 covers general government. Article 4 covers the judiciary. And Article 5 covers the uh, criminal justice, juvenile justice department, department of public safety, TABC, and various other law enforcement agencies within the state. Oscar, while visiting your office, you've had visitors, both uh, lobbyists, citizens come by. Uh, how can, what can citizens do back at home to sort of support any kind of legislation that they're interested in? You know, I tell everybody, um, let your voices be heard. It's important to get involved. The legislative process just doesn't occur from January through May. You know, that's kind of when we're usually here. It, it occurs in the interim. So if there's a cause or a specific issue that you really want to address, work on it in the interim. You know contact the reps now just because we're, we're not in just because we're not in session doesn't mean we can't help out what happens is if there's a good bill idea we try to flesh it out and work through it in the interim and then when session starts it's we already have the ball rolling and we're able to address those needs I mean we're here for six months but it's such a short amount of time with everything that's going on um, that it makes it very difficult to get an idea in January and run with it so I told everybody you know you need to plant the seed water it and eventually that fruit will grow and you're able to accomplish whatever goals you want to accomplish what are your some of your bills that you're supporting you know I have various bills. I had a, I have a bill right now that I was working that was brought to me by actually a local coach who's now athletic director. You know, down in the valley, baseball is very prominent, and you know AAU, little league, and then you have softball, and of course you have the UIO athletics. Um, there's a, an issue called bat rolling or bat shaving. So what they'll do is they they uh, they shave the bats and they shave them from the inside, so they kind of give them a boomerang trampoline effect. Very dangerous because the ball comes out like a knuckleball. So for the pitcher and for the third baseman, it, it's pretty difficult to play because the ball comes with a higher velocity and it's very hard to gauge. So um, fortunately there hasn't been any severe incidents in South Texas but I can anticipate if we don't address this need there may be you know uh, players that will get hurt. And then the other issue with that is the um, the rolling so what they'll do is, is they bend the composite bats and they break down the material to give it the same boomerang effect. Now this is not only one is it cheating but more important it's a big safety issue um, and it's, it's pretty prominent down in South Texas and throughout the whole state. So I filed the bill, I've been working on it, and I'm glad to say at this point in time UIL said, you know what, there is an issue with this, and they're going to try to address it through their changes within their internal rules. So I anticipate um, 
this upcoming UIL baseball playoff season, they're going to implement where they'll start testing the bats and make sure they look out for that to kind of send a chilling effect to let individuals know, not so much for the cheating, but more of the safety aspect because people can get hurt because of this. So, you know, that's an issue where I went ahead and filed the bill. I was planning to go through with it, which I'm going to, but ultimately the, uh, the need's already been addressed. How, how do you see the future of the Valley as a legislator? What are you looking towards in the future? You know, the big issue is going to be uh, redistricting. Um, you know, our census will come up in 2020. There's phenomenal growth. We're sitting at about a million people in Hidalgo County. I would anticipate maybe South Texans can actually gain another representative seat, which would be another asset for, for South Texas in general. And those lines will have to be redrawn. So that's going to be an important issue. Same thing with congressional lines. Those things will be redrawn. They would gain another congressional seat. So I think that's very important because it, once that's changed around, it'll be more representation for South Texas and it'll put us on the map. You know, the Valley is very fortunate. You know, I, I've been very lucky and blessed to be given the position of a vice chairman of a Appropriations, but on the Senate side, we have Senator Nahosa um, as Vice Chairman of Senate Finance. So the fact is that we have, you know, me in the respective House and Senator Nahosa in, in the in the Senate, and, and uh, we've kind of been involved in the budget process. Kind of really helps out because, you know, I'm I'm. I'm there to help out the entire state, but my heart is in South Texas, so I'm going to make sure I can do whatever I can to make sure that those needs are addressed, first and foremost. So it's been a big benefit, and, and I've enjoyed the process. As a municipality, we're sort of, we sort of take charge of making sure people get counted for the census. You mentioned census, that's why I'm bringing it up. Can you tell people why it's important they get counted, why it's important we get their entire family? It, it's very important because the way the districts are drawn, whether it be a House seat, a Senate seat, or a congressional seat, is with population. You know, you're going to give the individuals their representation based on population. If you don't go and you work the census and if folks don't come out there and report themselves, it makes things very difficult because, you know, we saw this a couple years ago. Hidalgo County should have probably come out at a million. They didn't. Why? Because probably folks didn't want to go ahead and, and work with the census and, and do what they needed to do. So when the census comes around again, it's important that if you really want to address your needs and cons concerns, make sure that that's addressed adequately. Make sure folks go out there, they work those numbers because there's strength in numbers. And if you show that the Valley's grown, which it has, you know, hopefully we're able to gain more representation because of that growth. So it, I, when the census comes around, it's going to be an issue that we really, really need to push for the entire community and it's a bipartisan issue doesn't matter if you're a Democrat Republican or bipartisan it's just the fact that there's so many folks living down there in South Texas that they need adequate representation and the only way we're going to do that is by by um, census numbers that are going to relate to what the population growth has been in South Texas any last message to the citizens you know just just get involved I tell everybody you know this is six months but this thing goes on you know in the interim as well so just make sure if there's any issues or concerns make sure you bring it up to us and if folks do want to make a change I urge them to kind of get started with that early and just work through the whole process especially in the interim with you know whether it be me or another representative or the senator on whatever cause they want and we can just work through it flesh that out and ultimately hopefully we can make either that change in policy or if it needs to be a change in law. Well, thank you very much, Representative. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. No, here thank in your you very office. Much. We'll continue to follow State Representative Oscar Longoria's mission to make sure that the Valley is represented in, the, in our budget. For the City of McAllen, I'm Roy Cantu. Thank you.